Hello YouTube. We've got a garden emergency and we're gonna deal with it today. This emergency is cucumber beetles. I've noticed them the last three days and every day there's more and more and I'm trying not to get frustrated or disappointed because I'm really afraid it's gonna wipe out my whole garden but we'll see. If you don't know what cucumber beetles are, that is the cucumber beetle. Actually, I think this one is dead. And then look over here. It's another one that might be dead. It's another one. I had thought that all these ants on my sunflowers are my biggest problem. But now I don't even care. Actually, earlier I had found those couple cucumber beetles that were dead. I think that the ants killed them. So, go ants. Okay, so here's some sunflowers. This is where I first found them. And something I've noticed is I often find them in here. So, when you're looking, make sure to really look in all the little crevices of your leaves. Flip them over though I usually find them on like the top face. Caterpillars you'll often find it underneath the leaves but I'm more so finding the cucumber beetles over top of the leaves so keep that in mind but they like to be like in where the blossom's gonna come out. I don't see any. So here's the deal with cucumber beetles. If you don't know what they are um, they're basically the spawn of Satan in your garden. Um, they're tiny little yellow beetles. They're only like this big. They're really little, but they're bright yellow. So they're they're easy to see, which is good. They're bright yellow with um, black stripes. Um, sometimes they have spots. There's a few kinds of them, so you might have to look them up to see pictures. So these beetles are really destructive, and they're attracted to vegetables like your cute your cucumber, cucurbit, cucurbit, whatever the cucumber family is. Um, so cucumbers, cucamelons, um, zucchini, like your squashes, they love squashes. And I'm finding them on my sunflowers a lot too. Though my sunflowers haven't bloomed yet, and I'll tell you why that's kind of surprising me in a second. What they do, why they're so bad, is the first thing is they kill your garden in stages. So, um, they plant their larva in the, in the ground, not on your plant, like they don't lay eggs, and you won't find their eggs on your plant, but they lay them in the ground and they'll overwinter there, and so when you plant your seedlings or your seeds, they might kill them before they even, um, get to take off, like when they're tiny, tiny, they kill them. Um, but let's say you get past that, which I did. I didn't have, I didn't lose any seedlings to them. I actually just noticed them this week. They will, will eat your plants just like any other bug, which is bad. But what makes them worse is as they're eating, they basically inject into your plant a bacterial infection that makes it so your plant can't absorb water and the nutrients it needs and then it just dies. Which is terrible because it's really hard to get ahead of them before they introduce those infections to your plants and then the last thing they do is when they're mature adults is they like I said before lay their eggs in the ground around the base of your plants and the larvae feed off the roots so you can have a perfectly healthy plant and then the next day it's on the ground totally dead and you pull it out there's no roots left because they just devoured them so they work really fast they multiply very quickly. I think it said one female beetle can lay up upwards of 1,500 eggs in her lifespan. And I'm pretty sure their lifespan's only like one season. So today we're gonna talk about some things you can do to help get rid of them, which from what I've read is really hard to do. It's mostly a prevention that you need to deal with. Now I didn't know these existed until three days ago when I found them in my garden. So I can't prevent, obviously, but I will for next year. So let's start with preventative measures. Something you can do to prevent is 
really cleaning up your garden well in the fall, getting ready for winter because they um, go dormant in piles of leaves and old plants, that sort of thing. And so if you really clean out your garden, you should be able to hopefully keep them from having their dormancy right inside your garden. That's something I think is kind of hard to do because you're also told to like throw leaves onto your garden and let things sort of sit on top of your garden beds over the winter and then they help with your soil. So it's like, do I avoid the beetles or do I make my soil better? I don't know. The next thing you can do is plant trap crops. There are a few types of squash. I forget what the kind was. Um, there's a certain type of squash that they really like, but you can use anything like cucumbers, you can use anything they're attracted to. But you can plant that crop away from your actual garden. Plant it early, let them find it so they're already all over that trap crop and stay there instead of going to your real garden. Another thing to do is to delay planting your cucumbers and squash and other things that they like so that hopefully once they come into their dormancy they'll go to your neighbor's garden, some guy down the road, get his squash and leave yours alone. So by the time you've planted them they already are like oh there's nothing here we don't need to come here. Another thing you can do is intercropping. This is much easier to do effectively if you have a really big garden. Mine is only 10 foot by 10 foot square, but then when you take away the pathway things, I think it is 68 square feet. Um, so it's really small. Um, so even though I did intercrop a little bit, everything's really close together. The idea of intercropping is um, throwing off the scent of your plants. So if you have a zucchini that's hidden by um, tomatoes and onions and and garlic and other things, it's going to be harder for the uh, cucumber beetles to find them and other bad pests. So you can try that. You can also plant plants like marigolds and such that are supposed to deter pests. I don't know if marigolds deter specifically cucumber beetles. They didn't do a good job for me. <laughs> or you can plant plants like nasturtium which are very attractive to pests and they'll infest that plant and then you can pull it out and literally like burn it and get rid of them. Okay so now let's talk about I've done the preventative measures or I didn't know about them before I could do the preventative measures and now I have an infestation. That's where I am right now that's what I'm dealing with and I found a few things that we can do to get rid of them and so I'm not gonna do it right now because it's so stinking hot out and the only thing I have on hand is water-based so we're gonna do it tonight and it's Father's Day so we're going to my brother's house to celebrate in a couple hours so we're gonna leave early go to the dollar store and pick up some things and I will bring you along with me and we're gonna see if we can get rid of these cucumber bugs together <laughs> So I heard that Murphy oil soap can help to kill them or get rid of them. So I picked up some of this. It says the formula is 98% naturally derived with water, coconut, and plant-derived cleaning ingredients, natural fragrance, and only 2% synthetic ingredients. So even though I would prefer to avoid spraying my garden with stuff. That sounds like something I can live with, especially because it says if you do directly ingest this, for, like if a kid drinks it, it doesn't even say to send them to the doctor, it just says drink a bunch of water to dilute it. So that makes me feel okay. And someone else on Facebook said that they used it and it was successful um, and they sprayed it right on their plants and didn't have any issues. I got this spray bottle put it in. It's a little less than a liter. Well, it's like somewhere in here is a liter, which is what the recipe calls for. So I'm just gonna half it. So for a half of a liter, you're gonna do three quarters of a tablespoon of the Murphy oil soap. 
Okay, it's later in the evening now, so we're gonna start this war. So we're gonna use that spray that I put together earlier today, and we're also going to make a soak right now to put in through the root systems to hopefully kill any larva. And cucumber beetles are most active between dawn and dusk. So the best time to apply these soaks and apply these sprays is later in the evening so that you hopefully catch some more. Okay, so I have my Murphy oil soap, and some rubbing alcohol, and a watering can. The measurement I found for the soak or the spray, this one was either, um, is to do a cup of water, a cup of rubbing alcohol, and a tablespoon of Murphy soap. Um, I'm not going to do that because I bear, I have maybe a cup of rubbing alcohol left, so I'm just going to do um, a generous amount of rubbing alcohol and a generous amount of Murphy oil soap and then fill it up. Okay, and now we're going to apply the spray to the um, leaves of the plants and we're going to apply the soak to the roots of the plants. Remember when you're applying your spray to apply to the top side of the leaves but also the bottom side of the leaves and inside the, where the flowers are, where I showed you before in the sunflowers, where the blossoms are going to come out, get in there because I like to hide in there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is set some live traps. So I've got some bowls and these things, I guess are also bowls. These ones we're going to put that same soapy water into and hopefully they'll fly into them. These things are going to cover in Vaseline and hopefully they'll get stuck to them and then those are just fly traps. So hopefully this mostly just captures what I want it to capture and we don't kill too many good bugs in the process. Alright, I have finished my traps. I might make more. So let's set them out into the garden. I'm gonna be setting the traps around places that I've seen the bugs a lot, um, places they like, plants they like, and hopefully they'll see the bright yellow color and would go for my traps over the plants. Alright, the traps are set, so we will check in over the next few days to see how they work, if they're successful. The spray I'll probably do every night until I see that they are gone. And the soak I think I'll probably do once or twice a week. So hopefully this works. Okay, it's the next morning, 5.30 a.m. First thing I see. So I'm looking around the plants. First thing I saw was one of those stinking beetles on my plant. And he was alive. But then he seemed to just sort of fall off. Oh, here's another one. So there's one little bug in my trap. Let's take a look around together. There's one in there. That's something, but not. There's another one. There's two. So it seems to me like this soapy water trap is more effective than the sticky traps. Now, something I was thinking about last night is that I'm worried because in the sunflowers, I 
sprayed right in where the blossom is going to end up coming out. Like they're not there yet, there, no pollinators are going to be going in them. So I know it'll be rinsed off before that to make sure I don't spray in those. I don't want to harm any pollinators and good insects. A few innocent casualties is worth it if we get the majority of this issue under control because these things will just decimate my entire garden and I won't get anything out of it. Another thing I've been doing is cutting away the, any leaves that look like they have quite a bit of damage and discarding them like away from my garden. Like I said yesterday, these bugs leave a bacterial disease in your plants. So it's really important that you don't leave any discarded debris from any plants that have been affected by them. The disease can contaminate your soil and so it can affect future generations of plants. I need to be really aware and if I see a plant that's got the disease I might just take the sacrifice and rip it out. So just from looking around after the first night I think that the soapy water in yellow bowls is much more effective than the sticky traps. None of my sticky traps have them on them. I think that the spraying the plants helped. I did find some on like my sunflowers and stuff, but I did find bugs on my plants, but I don't know, I just, I feel like it was less than what I was expecting. I think no matter what methods you use, you have to be out at least every morning and every evening looking for them and squishing them. They're pretty easy to get. I'm not gonna lie, like, I have um, found, oh look at this. You'll often find them sort of like on each other like this, or just sickos. Um, so you get lots of two for ones, which is great. But see, now I'm going to, maybe I'll just drop them right in there. Um, one of them fell in the, here, but as long as it's not in my soil, I, that's fine. Hand squishing them is, what I'm finding, is the most effective because I know that they're dead and I can like count how many I got. And it's like, there's been a few evenings, I'll easily get like 50 in one go. There are just so many. If you see any curled leaves, open them up because they're often hiding in there and in like where the, anywhere where it's like a hiding place. You need to search for them. If you just rely on the soapy traps and the spray, I don't think it'll be effective enough. I think you need to be hand picking as well. So I think I'm gonna sign off here. I really hope that this helped you. Um, I really hope it's gonna help me. <laughs> if it did help you, uh, give my video a thumbs up and if you have any other suggestions of how to deal with cucumber beetles Please leave a comment below. I would love to know and I'm sure anyone watching this video would love to know I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon